Hello friends, in this session I will be talking about real world scenario of using namespace aliasing. An alias is a term used for nickname or a short name given to a thing or somebody. Now before I get into the details of namespace aliasing, uh, I want to make sure that we have clear understanding about what exactly a namespace is in c .net. Now a namespace is basically considered as a domain for any type we have and a type represents any class or, or an assembly etc. Now to give you some examples like system.io, system.data, system.net, system.security.cryptography, system.data.sql client, all these things are nothing more than namespaces. Now namespaces also help uh, developers and uh, software development teams to hierarchically organize their types within a namespace. Now uh, let's jump on to uh, the topic which is about the real world usage of namespace aliasing, uh, what the issue people see in industry and how to resolve it. Now during my work with various companies uh, I have encountered this situation many times and uh, I will show you the exact error what your compiler will will show you uh, while you are writing code and how to resolve this issue. Now uh, before I begin with the demo let me show you the code here. So here I have a class named account and as a class name is always a noun so it is very common that uh, two different namespaces or two different assemblies may end up having the same class. So here I have a class account in the different namespace uh, bank application dot checking. Uh, you can also assume that uh, this namespace could be in a totally separate assembly and you might end up adding a new DLL uh, by adding a reference to that. But for the code demonstration purpose, uh, here I am just showing that namespace uh, within uh, the same program.cs file. Now I have one more namespace here which is bank application.savings. Now these two namespaces are totally different entities but they end up having same class named account and same class named account. Now I have a client application and this client application is basically designed to give you uh, the type of the account uh, by which you want to create the object from. So here I have a function called account type and this account type function is in the class account which is in the namespace bank application dot savings. Similarly I also have an account type function in the class account which is in a totally separate entity which is bank application dot checking. Now uh, what I did, I have added uh, these two namespaces here up front in my console application main function right over here. So on top of it I have these two using statements which means I can access the account class now and I am going to create an object out of it. So I say account obj object equal to new account and I go and I build my solution. So even before building you might have noticed that it was showing the red color squiggly and that squiggly was representing the, the issue. So it says that account is, so if you see it is giving me the error right here is an ambiguous reference. So this term ambiguous is the key here. So ambiguity means when things are confused or it is found at multiple places and that causes ambiguity or when multiple things look similar. So it is an ambiguous look. Now account is an ambiguous reference between bank application dot savings dot account and bank application dot checking dot account. Now this is the issue and to resolve such issue you need to use the concept or technique called namespace aliasing. Before I get into it let me share the real world scenario where I encountered this or where you may encounter it. It is not very obvious to encounter this situation uh, when you are dealing with 
uh, Microsoft provided namespaces as I have named few just earlier in this video uh, but uh, when I was working with Microsoft and I worked with multiple teams and different teams work on building solutions together which were interoperable with each other uh, many times I have encountered the situation that I am using multiple DLLs which were created in-house within Microsoft by different teams and when we add multiple namespaces uh, here and there you will notice that uh, very often you will receive this error about uh, namespace ambiguity which means that the class or functionality you are trying to invoke was actually found uh, in multiple namespaces uh, during compilation and then you receive uh, compilation errors complaining about uh, ambiguous references between uh, multiple namespaces. To avoid such situation, the technique is about namespace aliasing and for that you just need to either, you need to pass uh, the full uh, namespace right over here, just like that. So either you can use this technique and as you can see this error is, is gone um, or let me show you one more thing real quick. So as you can see that error is gone which means that account class I'm talking about is from the savings namespace. So it doesn't matter that this account exists in checking also as we have seen previously right over here under checking but since I gave a fully qualified domain name or fully qualified namespace then this thing is resolved. Uh, the issue comes when you have lengthier namespaces. For example, when I worked with Microsoft, uh, the names were like Microsoft.exchange.transport.protocol.something. And in that case, your code line becomes lengthier and lengthier. So to avoid it, there is one more technique you can use, and that is what we call aliasing. So you can give an alias to it, and my favorite technique has always been uh, picking the uh, the first letter of each word so it is uh, bank application savings equal to this and I call it bank application checking equal to this so if you want to have a closer look um, this is these two are the namespaces I assigned to to bank application savings and similarly, I picked the letters from bank, application, checking. So this allows you to give namespaces. And right now, what I can do, I can bring it back to normal as it was before. And as you can see again, we see the red squiggly because it is now um, intended to give us compilation errors. And it is reporting issues. If I hover my mouse right here, it again shows me the issue that a type or namespace name account could not be found are you missing a using directive or an assembly reference um, we are not missing any using directive we are not missing any assembly reference we have all the things in place but the issue is that it is happening because of ambiguity between the namespaces functionality and hence right now rather than giving the fully qualified name I will give the alias and here I say BAS dot and as you can see, even IntelliSense is able to show you the namespace um, functionality, whatever it holds inside it. And similarly, if you say BAC dot, it also shows you account. And right now, if I pick BAC account, and here also, I say BAC dot account. And here, now I say console dot Now, as you can imagine, it is not giving me the, um, the functionality inside it because I do not have system namespace added because I want to print something. So I am adding system and now console is resolved. So I say console dot write line and I want to say obj dot account type and this thing uh, should print And this thing should print uh, account type from checking. So it should say checking. Uh, let's uh, save it. Let's build it. And now let's run it. So as you can see, it is showing me now checking. 
Now, if I want to do it with a savings, because it BAC stands for savings, so I can do BAS dot account. And similarly, I can change this BAC to BAS. And object is same. I save it. Let me rebuild it. And let's save it, run it one more time. And this time you see savings. So this is uh, when you are building uh, applications in-house, uh, which has been built over the period of years, or you are buying some third party of the set of the shelf solutions or source code, uh, you may encounter these situations um, very often and it is very normal. And now you know the answer to that. And this technique is known as namespace aliasing or resolving ambiguous namespaces. So I hope you learned something new today about it. And once again, thank you very much for watching and I appreciate it.